Hi, I'm going to talk about the scenario for your next run of level field simulation. The setup of the simulation is the same as the last one. So this is a blood testing lab. It takes samples from customers and you need to perform several steps of testing and then deliver the result. As in last time, this is a customer orders. Every customer deliver a sample blood and every blood sample needs to pair up with a testing kit. After pairing up with a testing kit, the sample will start its journey. It will visit three stations in four steps. First step is in station one, second step in station two, third step in station three, and the fourth step coming back to station two again. You are also given the service time per blood sample or here I just call it per job. Step 1 of process takes 3 hours for each sample. Step 2 takes 1.5 hours, so on and so forth. There is no variation in processing time. You have currently one machine in every station. You are also given the purchase cost, that's the cost to add one machine and also you are given the retirement price which means the amount of money you will collect by selling a machine. You need to maintain at least one machine in every station. Also there is an order lead time for purchasing machine. So what that means is if you place an order to buy a machine today, it will arrive five days after. It will not arrive immediately. So this is a there's a huge implication here. Please plan your ordering time accordingly. If you find out you are out of stock, you are running out of capacity, and then you place an order for machine, it could be very late. You have more decisions in this time. You are initially given a cash of $1 million. If you just leave the money in the bank, they generate an interest of 10% annually. They are compounded daily. And your first decision is on the number of, of machines in each step or in each station. You can adjust the number of machines by simply selling machines or buying machines. Second decision is the scheduling rule at the testing station. That's station two. We have a scheduling rule here simply because there are two steps, step two and four, taking place in this station. By default, the rule is first in, first out. That means whichever sample that comes in first will be processed earlier. You can change that by giving priority to step two or step four. If you give priority, priority to step two, that means the station will process all step two jobs before processing any step four job. These are the two decisions that you had in the previous run. And now there are three more new decisions. First, the third one is contract type. You can specify the contract you're going to offer to customers. I will explain that in the next slide. Fourth, you can take a loan in a case where you are running out of cash. When you take a loan, you have an annual interest of 12% for the loan. Lastly, you need to manage the inventory policy here. The way you manage inventory is quite simple. You simply specify the parameters for the inventory policy, specifically the reorder point and order quality. I will explain more later on. Your goal is the same. You try to maximize the cash position at the end of simulation. Your revenue is determined by the customer's lead time. Customer's lead time is the time they need to wait before they receive the outcome of their test. In other words, that's the amount of time an order stays in your system, in your lab. So you can now offer one of the three contracts. The first contract is the default one. Every contract specifies three numbers. Revenue per product, that's a full revenue. Quarter lead time and maximum lead time. If you are able to fulfill the demand, deliver the f demand, uh, deliver the result within the quarter lead times, then you will be able to receive the full revenue. 
If you deliver the result in more than quarterly time, then the amount you collect will decrease linearly depending on the actual lead time. If you deliver the outcome in more than the maximum lead time, then you receive nothing. You do the job for free. For example, in contract one, which is a default contract, if you deliver the result within seven days, you collect a revenue of 750. If you deliver the result between seven to 14 days, then the revenue declines depending on the actual lead time you deliver. If you deliver the outcome in more than 14 days, you receive nothing. You can change your contract type anytime at no cost during your control period. New contract will be applied only to new arriving orders. During the simulation, if you want to change the contract type, then simply click on this customer order queue. It will bring out a menu where there's a edit data button. Please click on that button and you will be able to see this menu to choose your contract type. You also need to manage the testing kit inventory in this simulation. As I said earlier, each block sample requires a testing kit to carry out the experiment or the test. You need to manage the inventory for the testing kits. Every testing kit costs you $600. When you place an order to replenish your testing kit, there is a fixed ordering cost of $1,000. When you place an order, you need to wait for four days before it is delivered. Or in other words, you have an order lead time of four days. So now, let me give you an example. The total cost of ordering five kits is going to be $4,000. You're going to specify the inventory policy by giving two numbers to the simulation, the order quality and the reorder point. You can change those decisions by clicking on this material buffer icon in the simulation. And then the simulation will execute the policy according to those parameters on your behalf. Specifically, it will monitor your testing kit inventory when your testing kit inventory falls below the reorder point, then if you have sufficient found, it will trigger an order to the supplier. It will order the quantity Q that you specify here. So in other words, you don't need to click a button so-called placing an order. No, all that you need to do is to specify order quantity and reorder point and then the simulation will order according to those two numbers. So you don't need to so-called clicking a button to place an order. During the simulation, if you want to change your inventory policy, please click on this material buffer icon, which will bring on a dialog looking like this, where there's a button called edit data. So click on it click on the edit data button it will bring up another dialog where you can enter your reorder point and order quantity. The simulation will run at a speed of 48 simulated days per real day or in other words two simulated days per hour. Right now the simulation is suspended on day 50 so you have 50 days of historical data to check out. You'll run the simulation from day 51 to day 266. That's roughly 4.5 real days. During this 4.5 days, you can change any decision as you like. The simulation will finally end it on day 296 using your configuration you left on day 266. In other words, on day 266, you will lose the control of the simulation and then the simulation will use the configuration you leave on day 266 to run another 30 days of simulation. But these 30 days will be run in probably less than 5 minutes in an accelerated rate. Simulation will run in real time 24 hours a day. 
Demand is random. All that you know is a general pattern of demand, as I show you in the graph in the bottom over here. Initially, demand will grow. The average demand rate will grow linearly. But just to remind you, that's the average demand rate. The actual demand is fluctuating. So demand will grow for roughly 80 to 110 days. And then it will plateau for approximately 90 to 100 days. And then you will start to decline until hitting zero on day 296. This is the only information you know about the demand.